There are some pretty exciting things going on on the planets above the skies, and it's not just about Mars anymore, which has been the star of space discoveries for decades. It's time to make way for new floating rocks. NASA's latest antics have discovered a mysterious planet just beyond our solar system, and to say we're excited would be an understatement. Let's dive right in and explore together. First and foremost, let's dive into the heart of the story. NASA sure is steadfast in its discoveries and its persistence has paid off. The latest we have on the alien planet beyond our solar system, a place where anything is possible, is the strange presence of carbon dioxide. That's right, a gas that is present in abundance here in our solar system seems to have made a home on the planet beyond it as well. This study of a gas giant planet 700 light years from Earth orbiting a sun-like star reveals vital details about the planet's makeup and development. On a side note, does it not seem eerily similar to Earth? The discovery, which has been accepted for publication in Nature, suggests that Webb may be able to detect and measure carbon dioxide in the thinner atmosphere of smaller rocky planets in the future. Coming up, here's a little about the planet in question. Wasp 39b is a hot gas giant with a mass roughly the same as Saturn and diameter 1.3 times that of Jupiter. Its extreme puffiness is related in part to its high temperature. This floating rock, in contrast to the cooler, more compact gas giant in our solar system, orbits very close to its star. We'll be honest here, it doesn't sound like a planet worth inhabiting. Imagine living even closer to the sun than we already do, and you'll see what we're talking about. It is only about one-eighth the distance between the sun and Mercury, completely one circuit in slightly more than four Earth days. The planet was discovered in 2011 based on ground-based detections of the subtle, periodic dimming of light from its host star as the planet transitioned or passed in front of it. Other telescopes, including NASA's Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescopes, have previously detected water vapor, sodium, and potassium in the planet's environment. Webb's unparalleled infrared sensitivity has now confirmed the presence of carbon dioxide on Earth. Like we said, eerie similarity. Now here's what we know about the filtered starlight on the planet. It sure does sound magical, doesn't it? But our true science and space geeks out there understand how much science goes into it. Transiting planets such as WASP-39b, whose orbits we observe from the side rather than from above, can provide excellent opportunities for researchers to study planetary atmospheres. During transit, some of the starlights are completely eclipsed by the planet, causing the overall dimming while others transmit through the other planet atmosphere. Science for Dummies 101 tells us how different gas absorbs different color combinations. Researchers can use these small differences in the brightness of transmitted light across the spectrum of wavelengths to determine exactly what is in the atmosphere. WASP-39b is an ideal target for transmission spectroscopy due to its inflated atmosphere and frequent transits. Next up, let's go back to the first clear detection of carbon dioxide. The WASP-39b observations were made with Webb's near-infrared spectrograph, a small hill between 4.1 and 4.6 microns in the resulting spectrum of the exoplanet's atmosphere provides the first clear, detailed evidence for carbon carbon dioxide ever detected in a planet outside the solar system. Quote, as soon as the data appeared on my screen, the whopping carbon dioxide feature grabbed me, said Zafar Rustamoklov, a member of the JWST Transiting Exoplanet Community Early Release Science Team. In charge of this analysis, remarked, it was a special moment crossing an important threshold in exoplanet sciences. We're simple people. Finding a $20 change in our pocket is special enough for us, but to each their own. Now, in case you didn't know, no observatory has ever measured such subtle differences in brightness of so many individual colors. In an exoplanet transmission spectrum spanning the 3 to 5 5.5 micron range. Access to this part of the spectrum is critical for measuring the abundance of gases such as water, methane, and carbon dioxide, which are thought to exist in a variety of exoplanets. Understanding the composition of a planet's atmosphere is important because it reveals information about the planet's origin and evolution. Carbon dioxide molecules are sensitive tracers of the planet's formation story. Researchers can determine how much solid versus how much gaseous material was used to form this giant gas planet by measuring this carbon dioxide feature. The James Webb Space Telescope, which will make this measurement for a variety of planets over the next decade, providing insights into the details of planet formation and the uniqueness of our solar system. Lastly, let's take a quick dive into the methods of the team responsible for this detection. Natalie Batala, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at UC Santa Cruz, leads the team of astronomers who discovered by using JWST to observe WASP-39b. Previous Hubble and Spitzer observations
observations of this planet, she claims, provided tantalizing hints that carbon dioxide could be present. The JWST data revealed an unequivocal carbon dioxide feature that was practically shouting at them. Carbon dioxide is an important component of the atmospheres of our solar system's planets, including rocky planets, Mars and Venus, as well as gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. So you might be wondering why discovering on an exoplanet, one of which resides outside our solar system, is groundbreaking. Well, to put it simply, it's significant because it's a gas that they are likely to detect on small rocky planets as well as an indicator of the overall abundance in the atmosphere of massive planets with heavy metals. Moving on, here's some other news you might find interesting. Now we have for you NASA's moon rocket that is almost ready to take off. NASA's most powerful rocket yet is set to take off on its first test flight, kicking off the U.S. Space Agency's mission to return humans to the moon, and eventually Mars. Fifty years after the last Apollo mission, the unnamed Space Launch System rocket will blast off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. Three test dummies are strapped into the capsule instead of astronauts to measure vibration, acceleration, and radiation, which is one of the most dangerous hazards to humans in deep space. The SLS Orion combination stands 98 meters tall and serves as the centerpiece of NASA's successor to the Apollo Moon program of the 1960s and 1970s. The SLS, billed as the most powerful and complex rocket in the world, is the largest new vertical launch system NASA has built since the Saturn V, which flew for Apollo. Artemis II will launch astronauts into orbit around the moon without landing on its surface. If the first two Artemis missions are successful, NASA hopes to land astronauts back on the moon, including the first woman, as early as 2025. About time a woman walked on the moon, don't you think? The Artemis program aims to eventually establish a long-term lunar base as a stepping stone to even more ambitious astronaut missions to Mars, a goal that NASA officials estimate will take until the late 2030s. This could mean big things for the future of space travel, but all we can do is sit and watch from our screens. As always, next up on our news radar is NASA's moonbound spaceship and the unusual things it's carrying. Spoiler alert, they're taking a lot of dolls. The first astronauts to set foot on the moon brought back a few space souvenirs for scientific research. For the first time in 53 years, one of them will be able to return home. By the way, we're not talking about an astronaut here, but about a small rock. The Orion spacecraft is carrying a motley collection of mementos on its 1.3 million mile journey. An Apollo 11 moon rock will be included in the bundle. It's well-traveled rubble that happened to be aboard the agency's final space shuttle flight in 2011. The official flight kit, which weighs about 120 pounds of strange stuff, is mandated by federal law. The goal is to give NASA, commercial partners, and international organizations the ability to use the mementos as awards or museum exhibits. To get those items on board, each organization must first submit a written request to NASA for approval. There are a lot of flags, patches, and stickers in the mix, which are mostly intended for project employees and contractors. But there are some less expected items that made the cut, including Snoopy, tree seeds, and test dummies. It's all about priorities, right? Lastly, here's the latest on Mars. When NASA's Perseverance Mars rover began examining rocks on the floor of Jezero Crater in the spring of 2021, scientists were taken aback. They expected to find sedimentary rock, which would have formed when sand and mud settled in a once very watery environment because the crater held a lake billions of years ago. Instead, lo and behold, they discovered that the floor was made of two types of igneous rock. One formed deep underground from magma, and the other from surface volcanic activity. The journal holds many interesting details. Exhibit A, igneous rocks or rock of ages. Exhibit B, mysterious magma formed rocks that are plentiful on Mars. The findings of River Delta that Perseverance has been making are, to put it lightly, extremely exciting for our scientists. And it's all because of the unusual nature of the environment these rocks formed in. That's all for this video, friends. Let us know what you think of the new exoplanet. In the meantime, we'll be back with another video. Bye.